introduce All right, good evening. Uh, need to introduce myself, I'm Byron. I used to work here before I went into voluntary, voluntary isolation. And the funny thing is, yeah, the funny thing happened on the way to the church. Now, the funny thing is that I thought, hey, I'm gonna get all this done because I can just stay home. And it amazes me how I had like four or five times more stuff to do at home. So I'm kind of glad to get back to work. Uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but we are excited about uh, being here. Uh, John tested negative. I tested negative. So we're fine. Everything's fine. No symptoms, no nothing, but we wanted to play it safe. And so we are glad to be back into the routine of things just in time to be off for Christmas. So uh, we won't have services here next week. But if you are watching online, let me address you first. Um, been there, done that this last week. Uh, you are not forgotten. We love you. Uh, stay in touch with us. But we want you to be connected. So um, especially those of you who I talked to earlier today that would be here if you could, but you have other things going on, uh, just know that we love you and we're thinking about you and praying for you. All right. We're going to start with the singing, but I wanted to kind of give an update of where we're at and what we're doing and all that's going to be um, coming. Uh, one of the things, guys, in the, in the sound room as you're talking, if you could every once in a while do a shot of the congregation, because sitting at home, I enjoyed watching Mike and, and watching Dallas, but I wondered, is anybody else there? Because I, I can hear noises, but he may be speaking to an empty room and just one of those crowd noise tapes or something. But anyway, so if, if you can do it, if you can't, I get it too, but it's just a thought. You get a picture. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry, what? Wow, awesome. Okay, everybody wave at the cameras, so they're probably back there. Probably that one back there. All right, there you go. <laughs> you guys are so cool. All right, you didn't let 2020 get to you. That's good. That's good. You maintained the faith. You stayed strong. You kept the faith. You endured. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. All right, we're going we're gonna to open a word of prayer and then jump right into the time of, of singing. And one other thing, I am so grateful for Mike um, for, for leading last week and for filling in. And this War Room material, uh, solid. If you haven't seen the movie, I highly encourage you to watch the movie. I think we have it in the library. But this day and age, it's probably online. You can probably easy, easily access it as well. But thank you to Mike saying that publicly for all he's been doing to, to help to fill in. Thank you to Dallas for filling in last Sunday. And so we're going to jump in with a word of prayer and then have some songs. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, thank you for the chance to gather as your family. Thank you that through technology that even those of us at home are still together and that we get to be a part of your family in fellowship and in prayer and in um, time of study and time of reflection, but mostly as your, as your children worshiping you. I pray that even now as we turn to lifting our voices, that you overwhelm our, our hearts and our minds and our souls and our strength with our need to love you with everything. I pray that you be worshiped in spirit and truth tonight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I didn't do a mic check. Is that loud enough? Well, I, I want to publicly thank the pastor for the opportunity to be able to be here with you tonight and to lead the music. Um, I know it comes as a shock to a lot of people, evidently, that I can sing, but I'm not the only one in the church that can sing. And um, I want to give you the opportunity. I'm from the old school where songs were hymns, and they had words that meant something. And uh, I know when you look at me, you see this gray hair, you think to yourself, wow, he's old. And uh, my grandkids uh, wanted to know if I played with Methuselah. I said, not quite, almost. And uh, so I want to invite you to sing with me, if you will. If you'll stand, we're going to sing just a little talk with Jesus. And uh, we're going to be talking about the war room, which is about prayer. And I want you to look at the words of this song. Uh, I probably should have made the, 
The word's a little bit bigger now, but I want you to notice as we sing these words, the meaning that's behind it. And um, I'll just go ahead and uh, we'll get started then. Kim? I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. He bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turning, you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears. My eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turning, know a little fire is burning, find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. How long has it been since you sung that? A long time, right? Isn't that good? Don't you like that? I like that part that says when you, when you feel a little prayer will turning and you know a little fire is burning. What kind of fire is that? That's, yeah, yeah. When's the last time you felt a little fire burning in your prayer life? Amen? I want you to know, now listen, take witness. We prayed last Wednesday night for this man, for this man, where's John? That handsome guy in the sound room back there. All of them are handsome, but the guy to the right. And look where they're at tonight. Is that a prayer wheel burning? Amen. We need to give the Lord a big round of applause for that. I mean, that's, that's fabulous. I mean, that's, that's the Lord raising them up. And from what I understand, they're clean. And you know what they told me when they texted me? They said they were negative. <laughs> so I, I was, you, know, you ever thought about praising the Lord for somebody being negative? I mean, that's amen. That's, that's a praise report. And then the next one we got here is what a friend we have in Jesus. Now, when I was a little kid, um, my mother used to do the clothes in a ringer washer. Now, I know a lot of people don't know what a ringer washer is. Uh, but this is the song that she sang in the basement. And I want you to listen to the words. It's good. Hey, you guys are going to do the PowerPoint for the music. Amen? Okay, good. So let's get started. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Take it to the Lord in 
discounted rate. How am I positioned? Is this, is this right? Is this good? Because it's, you know, in the middle, in the center. Not that I care about that sort of thing, about, you know, being exactly in the middle, in the center. Not that I'm OCD or anything. Okay. Prayer requests. We've got a number of things. Um, I didn't touch anything. I didn't move this hand. I didn't move this hand. But I hold it like that. Higher. Okay. I hear the instruction. I can't hear the words, though. I know you're telling me. I'm good now. Okay. All right. Uh, has anyone got any updates on Tommy? I haven't talked to anybody the last day or so. Is he still in the same place in the hospital? Do we know anything? Tommy Edwards? No, no update on him. Did get a text about Dr. Mark, Dr. Phillips, um, six inches of his, now make sure I'm remembering this right, six inches of his small intestine, mostly col the colon. Oh, a whole lot of his colon. Okay, I'm glad I asked. So six inches of the small intestine, a whole lot of the colon. Um, it's pretty serious. High infection, and that's what we're that's what we're specifically specifically going to be praying about tonight. Uh, so this is Mark Phillips, Dr. Mark, and uh, I'd like to actually spend some time praying just for him. So if you would uh, pray with me, please, as we lift him up. Lord, I thank you for for Doc's faith. I thank you for his desire to serve you and to follow you. And Lord, he's been through a lot physically over the next week, last week or so, and uh, the things that are happening. Lord, I thank you that you gave the doctors the wisdom to know what to do. And uh, even in that uncertainty and, and giving them the clarity and the direction. Well, Lord, there's still some fear and some uncertainty of what's happening next. But you got this. You've got his soul. You've got his body. You've got his spirits. You've got this under your control and your power. And so as his children, we're asking for the miraculous. We're asking for your will, good, pleasing, and perfect in his life. We're praying, Lord, that you as the great physician do some amazing things that can only give you the credit and you the glory. Pray for Miss Donna that you would bless her heart, keep her safe, protect her during this time. For those, those boys, that family, uh, it's an incredible family. And I, I just pray for every one of them right now that your hand be on them. And guard them, protect them, put a hedge around them so that you may be seen and glorified. And Lord, I pray for us as a church that you give us wisdom and discernment and sensitivity to pray as you prompt so that your will would be done. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Other additions? I know we've, we've had a few over the last few days. I understand Susan Lane got through her surgery okay, but I haven't heard any updates on her. Y'all have anything? Just just speak up, speak up or yell out or get my attention. I tell you what, if you've got the list in front of you, um, and if you don't, I think Debbie emailed it earlier. Yeah, so get on that email if you're not on our church email. But the Elliots are heading to Seattle, Washington. Uh, her their daughter is an ER doctor in uh, in Seattle, which you talk about being in the the heat of it. And so um, she's going to be with them. And then um, another son, uh, oh, yeah, it's the next one, number 25, Ryan, 
Uh, he's a senior pastor in Knoxville. By the way, he's a great preacher if you've never heard him preach. He's good. He and his wife have been sick, and all five tested positive. Yeah, the wife and the children positive for COVID. So we definitely want to be praying for him, for Tommy. Uh, and then you go down through the list. I love the way that they do this. Debbie does a great job of, of making the bold on the newer ones. So you see which ones are updates. But and go ahead and look through there. Oh, Miss Pat. Bless her heart. Pat Osborne. Oh, it, it just hurts. Um, she fractured her. She thought it was her arm, but it was her shoulder in three places. So she can't lay flat. So I think she's got to sit up and rest and whatnot. So a lot of prayer for Miss Pat. We need to be praying for Miss Pat. Pray for her husband. I didn't say that, Pat. I didn't pray. Okay. Uh, Bill, B-I-L-L-R-I-K-E. All right. You can, his mailing address. Go ahead. You can, you can call him. Man. All right. Any other updates that we want to put on here before we come in? Yes. 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 Good to have Buster. I had a, I heard a rumor that you went actually bicycling. You were on your bike. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. It's fine. Oh wow. Great. Greatly exaggerated. Rumor of his demise greatly exaggerated. That's good. Sounds like something Mark Twain would have said. Um, or uh, Will Rogers. I don't know which one. Of them. But anyway. Was it Mark Twain? I don't know. Any other, any other updates, additions? Yes, ma'am. So this is a uh, this is Kim talking. High school teacher. Her son died of COVID complications, so he'd be our age, so or younger. So she out in Oklahoma? Yeah. Okay. All right. Definitely be praying for that family. This COVID Pastor. has been yes. Oh hey, you microphone. We we got one in on Facebook. Prayer request. Yes, good. What you got? Kristen Debaras Kusek. Just pray, please pray for my grandson as he's fighting for his life. This is her son's, Chris's only child. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So for Chris, her, her grandson? Okay. All right. I believe it's her grandson. Yeah. Was her name? Her, no, his, uh, just her son's name, Chris, and her name, that's it. His son. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's pray for him as well as some other. Let's go ahead and go into another time of prayer. Lord, we do pray for for Chris's grandson, for what's happening in, in his life right now. We pray for your protection, your hand on him. We pray for Miss Pat and uh, all that's happening with her. Thank you for her, her sweet spirit and her faith. I just pray you'll continue to, to heal her, give her your comfort, your peace. Bless her. Thank you for the, the praise of Buster and for the way you've uh, protected him and guarded and guided and healed him. We do give you the glory and the credit for that. It's all about you. Well, we, we pray for these others who have been impacted, uh, for the teacher who lost her son. Lord, the, the pain there, we can't even begin to, to fathom. And so, Lord, uh, we, we know you know. We know that you, you can understand and you know what they need most right now. So we pray for that. We pray for your comfort and your peace, your presence, your strength. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Any other additions, corrections, anything else you want to, to pray about tonight? What I was going to mention was that, I don't know if you, you heard about it or not, but we took a, a group up last week, 15 of us, to Atlanta because of COVID. Um, we had to come back earlier than we, we anticipated. 
I was, I was in a meeting yesterday with some pastors, and I started to rattle down the list of all the things I feel like COVID has stolen from me. Uh, my son's graduation from staying in Atlanta. And, and I, I thought about, you know, if COVID was a person, I would beat him up. <laughs> I would punch him in the nose. <laughs> but I wonder, I wonder sometimes if uh, when things like that happen, it's easy to get bitter. It's easy to get frustrated. It's easy to get angry. But I think God is training us in this. Not to, not to take it lightly, not to dismiss it, but I think he's working on us. And I'm, I, I think that's about the only thing I'm going to hang on to right now. The rest of it is just irritation. So any, any other? What's that? No more fear. No more fear. Any other additions? Okay, so I was wondering. All right, the boy's name is Clay, and the son who passed away just last June, um, it's his son. So we'll definitely be remembering him in prayer. Okay. All right. Any others? Well, it's a little intimidating to be praying in front of a guy who's going to come tell us about prayer. It's almost like, are we doing it right? Did we do okay so far? We did good? Okay, good. You're so nice, you wouldn't have said it otherwise, but either way. Don't ask questions you don't want answers to. That's what my dad used to tell me. All right. All right, let's have one more time of prayer. And um, actually, I'll let you lead us if you want to come up and transition. And then we'll go from there. Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for this opportunity to be able to be in your house. How can we express to you, Father, the gratitude that we have tonight for to be able to have Pastor Byron back? Lord, maybe we take him for granted because he was gone. We just, uh, we missed him tremendously. Words can't express, Father, the absence that was present in our heart because he wasn't here. And even though the people, Lord, that uh, you sent, Father, to fill in for him, did a fine job, Lord, it was difficult to be without him. And so we thank you, Lord, for the man that you sent for this church, that angel, Heavenly Father, that stands and breaks the bread, Father. I pray, Father, you build a hedge of protection around him and his family and around this church, Lord, as we lift up your word in this, in this town and in this county. And thank you, Father, so much. Keep him safe. Keep him well. Him and his lovely wife and family. And Father, we pray that you would add back the things that have been taken away because of COVID that would make it sweet. And we thank you, Father, for Pastor Gene and Pastor John, and that you would do the same for them. <coughs> now, Father, we pray for those in our church who have suffered loss because of COVID. Father, I've heard it said that when the enemy gets tougher, harder, that God's children need to shine brighter and taste saltier. So, Father, help us, Lord, to shine your grace in a world that needs it more than ever. And so, Father, I would stand so inadequately to try to Teach your word about prayer. And so I pray that your Holy Spirit would just take control tonight. Father, that you would grab our hearts and tune it, Father, to hear what you would have to say. For we ask these things in your name. Amen. Are we ready to go? No? Okay. I'll wait till you get started. There we go. I like feedback. And last Wednesday night as we were talking, I don't want you to uh, be embarrassed about asking a question or answering a question. Because even though Pastor Byron preaches, I'm probably perhaps more of a teacher. He's a lot better looking guy than I am. And so I don't want you to feel embarrassed about asking questions. But one of the things that I'm really most concerned about tonight 
is that we get on a level one-on-one -on -one where you're comfortable with what's going on because I don't want you just to listen to this and go out and not implement it into your life. But I want you to notice that there's a spiritual law present in most churches and in most families today. And that law is, is that wherever an individual, wherever a family, a church, or even a nation abandons prayer, they will lose their moral compass. They will lose their ability to differentiate between good and evil, between right and wrong, between what is moral and immoral. And we see that no more present than what's happening today in our nation and in our churches. I was never so surprised and shocked is when our Supreme Court of the United States had to debate when life literally started and when they talked about that a woman was pregnant, that it really wasn't life, it was only potential life. And I was saddened as I listened to these learned individuals who had had what many had would call the best of education, and I thought to myself, that is what you come up with. And then I heard one pastor say, you know what? They're not really supreme. The Supreme Court is in heaven. But you will notice that that's true. Additionally, schools used to have prayer every morning. And I bet that there are those that are here today who, when they grew up, in school, they would have the Pledge of Allegiance. They would also have prayer, perhaps over the loudspeaker in their classrooms. But do you know schools no longer have prayer? It was challenged in the court. And they have removed it because they said that prayer might be offensive. Now they have police officers in the school. They don't call them police, they call them resource officers because they can't ensure peace. Second of all, as the government is watching as every prayer is being removed. At the time I studied this or made this lesson up, there was a coach in Texas who literally play, prayed a voluntary prayer over a game and he was let go, fired, because of the prayer that he prayed over a, a game. Churches no longer have prayer meetings because it failed to appeal to the masses. Anytime you see that prayer decreases, what you're going to discover is that immorality will increase. Well, why is that? Are we witnessing the enemy's strategic scheme of demonizing prayer? to remove our weapons that are divinely powered and given to us by God to defeat Him? Could that be happening underneath our nose and we're not recognizing it because we can't see the forest for the trees? Could believers today be unaware that this scheme is happening and we just don't see what it really is? Could that be? Certainly, prayer must be feared by the enemy more than we ever imagined. Or else, why would he be waging such a war against it? I don't know how many of you know William Cowper. He's an old saint of God. Prayerful individual. He said, Satan trembles when he sees the weakest Christian on his knees. If you today were to study your prayer life, if you today were to take apart the individual pieces of your prayer life and how you have put it together, would you discover that your prayer life is powerful or that it needs help? or that it is something that really God has been using? 
One of the things that I have discovered in my prayer life, especially as I sit down and pray, I like to look at a little program on my iPad called Facebook. And I've noticed that when anybody really gets into some serious difficulty, that they'll put out what they call a, a call for prayer on Facebook. And they'll call for prayer warriors. And they'll say, I need some prayer. And the need that they put out is in true, genuine prayer. But what I've discovered is, is that they are calling for a need for prayer because they themselves don't know how to get down to prayer in the time of need in their life. And so they're calling for someone to take their need and carry it on. And I thought to myself, why don't they know how to pray? Why don't they know how to take a serious need to pray? And the question comes, why don't we pray anymore? Is it because we don't want to? Is it because we don't have the time to pray? Is it because our past prayer life did not have a strategy or any organization or an effective outcome? How many of you here today really can tell me honestly why you think that prayer just isn't what it should be today? Can you give me any ideas? Unbelief. Unbelief? What else? We have ceased to pray in His will. Prayer requires discipline, and Americans do not have that. Amen. I just want you to take a look at this next thing, this next point, because I think today it really drives home. Is it because we've never really been taught how to effectively pray. Three years ago, my wife came out of a restaurant, tripped over one of those little parking things where you, when you pull up, you hit your tires and stop. She tripped over that and fell and broke her leg. They put a steel rod in it, and her leg has never healed properly. We never had much discussion, but I became the cook in the house. I also became the person who washes the clothes and mops the floor and vacuums and cleans and buys the groceries. Now, I don't so much mind buying the groceries and I don't so much mind cleaning, but I am a terrible cook. I can burn water. And so I got in the kitchen and I was trying to cook. And so I, I, I got up and talked to my mother and I said, Mom, how do I make a meatloaf? And she wrote the instructions down, but my mother would say a pinch of this and a handful of this and a scoop of that. So I made this meatloaf and it was terrible. It was terrible. But it smelled good as it was cooking. And so after I pulled it out of the oven, Joy says, can you cut me off a slice of that? And I said, yeah, but I noticed that the knife had a hard time going through it. <laughs> and so I, I gave her a slice and I smattered it with gravy, hoping that it would, you know. And she took the knife and the fork and she's trying to cut that thing. And, and she puts it in her mouth and she's chewing and she's chewing and she's chewing and she's chewing and she's chewing. And finally she just spit it out. And I said, is it good? And she goes, as graciously, now my wife's a sweet, dear woman, as graciously she could, she says, you need to throw that thing out. <laughs> and I said, uh, is it that bad? She goes, no, it's worse. <laughs> and I felt so deflated. And I said, is there no hope for it at all? She says, honey, there's no amount of sauce in Winn-Dixie to, to resurrect that thing. <laughs> Amen. Now listen, I had never been taught. And, and she says, you need to, you need to uh, watch Rachel Ray or, or Lydia on TV and get some ideas. And so I, I, I made probably six to eight meatloaves before I got one that, that 
you know, in the six to eight that I made, the Sumter County says, can we use those for road patch? We've got some potholes out here. We think that will make an excellent pothole. So they're somewhere over there being used, you know, they're not going to waste. Now, why is it that I had to go through six or eight before I could make a good one? Yes, exactly. We learn. You know, it, don't you find it odd that when you got saved, God didn't download praying 2.0 into your body? Do you know that the disciples came to the Lord and they, he, they, they asked him, teach us to pray. They never asked him, teach us to heal. They never prayed, teach us to do miracles. They said, teach us to what? To pray. And what did the Lord do? I mean, they, he went through some, some real uh, in-depth, difficult times on how to pray. And so that's what I believe that we need to do today when it comes to praying. You know, to pray strenuously needs careful cultivation. We have to learn our own personal expressions of communicating ourselves to our Father. Have you ever said the wrong word at the wrong time and felt bad about it? I, I, now, our pastor has OCD about getting things in the right way, you know. I'm from Kentucky, and we're not always noted about using the right word. Amen? And, and um, I sometimes, instead of using the word specific, use the word pacific. And sometimes I use other words. And my wife gets so tickled at me, and I'll say, what did I do? Now, let me tell you something. As a pastor, you can't get away from that when you're preaching and you just kind of slip. You know, my church would kind of laugh, and I'd think, did I say something wrong? I believe that sometimes as we're pouring our hearts out in prayer, that we need to learn to tune our hearts to talk to the Lord. Have you ever spoken with your spouse in such a way that as you begin to tune your heart to their radio signal, that you knew that you were tuned in and you were communicating? One of the things that I discovered is I love to watch the news. And sometimes my wife would love to talk to me about very intimate things as I'm watching the news. And I would have a tendency to go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And she was asking me some very intimate questions. And I said, uh-huh, to something that should have been, uh-uh. And she got right in front of the TV and put her hands on her hip and said, did you hear what I said? And I looked at her and honestly said, well, not really, but I'm trying to watch the TV, you know. And she got upset and I said, this isn't the time and this isn't the place. I said, well, let's make a time and a place where we can communicate. Did you hear that? A time and a place. I really believe today that if we were to talk about a learned discipline, as we take apart the nuts and the bolts, you're going to find that a time and a place is in ultimately important on where we pray and how we pray. One day, Jesus was praying at a certain place. Where do you go to pray? We have a place in our house to go to sleep. Where do we sleep? We have a place in our house to eat. Where do we eat? We have a place in our house to park our car. We have a place in our house to prepare the meals. Do we have a place in our house to pray? You should. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. So evidently, John taught his disciples. So I take it that prayer is a learned activity. Believers are not born spiritually with effective prayer techniques. It's learned. Jesus 
disciples asked to teach them how to pray. Prayer, like many spiritual disciplines, will be of a great effect when it's exercised regularly. Have you guys ever thought about the different types of prayers that are talked about in the Bible? One of the things that I've noticed is, is that we kind of lump them all together. But there's a prayer that we say over the meal, and that's called what kind of a prayer? Yeah, the blessing. And then there's a prayer that we have when we get ready to uh, sit down to uh, go to bed. When we get ready, we have our, our prayer before we go to bed. That's called the... Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I used to pray that when I was a young man all the time because I was scared to go to sleep. I was afraid of the boogeyman. I saw him once. I was young. I wasn't saved. And I would pray that prayer over and over and over again. And there was a verse that I would quote off of a plaque I got in vacation Bible school. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. It's in Isaiah. Um, so let's take apart prayer. If we were to take it apart piece by piece, you're going to discover the prayer is talking with God. It can be formal. It can be reciting a litany from a prayer book. Or it can be as informal as a quick thought that's flashed to God while one is stopped at a traffic light. Prayer can be silent, it can be spoken. Prayer can be uh, private or it can be public. The Apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing. Very early in the morning while it was still dark, the Lord got up and he went out and made his way to a deserted place and he was praying there. And I want you to notice he got up very early in the morning. How many people here are early people? How many people here are late type people? Like the, yeah, yeah, okay. Now, the late type people, you probably would do better when? Late at night. Early morning people, don't ask them to pray early, you know. Yeah, they just couldn't do it. Jesus' example of prayer is that we have to have a schedule for it. Now, we can be spontaneous, but I believe we need to have scheduled prayer. Do we schedule anything else in our lives? How many of you schedule meals in your house? Nobody schedules meals? Just one person? Does anybody schedule meals? How many people here schedule laundry? Does anybody here schedule anything? <laughs> Church? Nobody schedule meals? When do y'all have breakfast? When you get up? Yeah, okay. Well, I, I, I like to schedule my prayer. I like to have it early in the morning when I get up with a cup of coffee. If you read about Jesus, you're going to find that he had a regular time of prayer. It was early in the morning. And I think the reason why that he liked to have it early in the morning is before he started his day, he wanted to have time with his Heavenly Father. Uh, he did that purposefully. He got up early and he did it purposefully. There was a reason behind it. I think when we schedule our time with prayer, it's not a bad idea to make sure that we pick a time that's going to flavor our day. Effective prayer also has a place where it's located, a quiet place. Is there a quiet place in your house? Now that most of us are retired, there's probably no place in our house that it isn't quiet. But when my kids were at home, they had the stereo. They didn't have iPods in those days, and the stereo was loud. It was really difficult to find a quiet place in my house. We lived on a cul-de-sac. Our house seemed to have the best food, have the best drinks, so we had all the neighborhood in our house. And so having a place that was quiet was difficult. We are told that the disciples at one point literally had to hunt the Lord Jesus. Why? He had done gone somewhere quiet to pray. Now, you're going to discover that when and where are some of the first steps to having an effective strategy if you want to have effective prayer. You can't just leave that up to chance. The movie, The War Room, the actors chose a closet. Notice they got that in the book of Matthew. But when 
But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy, clo thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. That was the strategy. They wanted to do it in secret. Now, choosing a time and location. I think God will bring to your mind the place and the time for you to pray. If you can't find the time or the place, simply ask God to show you when and where you should pray. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you got a time, have you got a place where you pray? If you don't, you need to. You need to have a regular scheduled time of prayer. Now, also, too, you probably ought to have what they call as a prayer journal. Now, there's many types of prayer journals. But one of the things that you'll notice in our church is we have prayer lists. One of the things that I caution you about on your prayer lists is that a lot of times we put down the needs, but we don't put down when the answer comes through. It's important that we put down the answers to the prayers. Somebody made a song, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Listen, we need to go back to a time when answered prayer was in our life and finger those times so that they will strengthen our faith during the dry, the, the dry days and so that we can recall in our minds and in our hearts that faith which will sustain us so that we can go and say the Lord answered prayer on this date and write that down. I, I don't know about you, but I look now for answered prayer. When I saw the pastor out there in the vestibule, it wasn't like the pastor's back. You know what I said? Answered prayer. When I came up and I saw Gene, I said, answered prayer. When I saw John text me today and he says, I'm negative, I said, answered prayer. I did a little tea berry shuffle in the house. My wife's like, what happened? John's negative. She said, was he ever positive? I said, well, they, they thought he was positive. He had been exposed. And she said, oh, that's right. I forgot. And my wife's looking at me. I'm, I'm, I'm very, you know, expressive. And so I'm in the house doing this. And she says, are you crazy? I said, no. The Lord answered a prayer. Do you guys get excited when God answers prayer? I like the fact that David got all excited when God answers prayer. I put down in my prayer journal, God answered prayer! When my son swallowed his tongue, he was six weeks old, the doctor told us that he probably had permanent brain damage. He didn't think he'd ever be normal. So as he was growing up, he was so clumsy. Paul never did crawl. So I took him down to the lakefront, him and his younger brother, and they had this huge gym set. It's massive. And uh, I played tag on that gym set with him. And the thing was, is if you fell off, you were it. So one summer long, we played gym set, and they could never catch me. I was like a monkey. I was much younger then, but I was like a monkey. And I told my oldest son, I says, now when you catch me, you're the man. My, both of my sons are so competitive, and we played one whole summer long. But finally, at the end of the summer, I couldn't get away from him. And he caught me, and there was this big smile on his face. And I went home, and I told my wife, I said, Paul caught me. And she said, he did. I said, yeah. So there's no brain damage in him. God answered a prayer. Now, he was 13 years old, and that had been a 13-year-old prayer, but God answered prayer. I wrote in my prayer journal. I would laugh one minute and cry the next. God answered prayer. And my son come in and looked at me and says, why are you crying? I said, I'm not, I'm laughing. 
He said, why are you laughing? I said, because you tagged me. He goes, is that that big of a deal? <laughs> I said, yeah, because it was answered prayer. Listen, when you get a prayer journal and you go back and you see how long you're praying, let me tell you another example. I've been praying for my brother-in-law for like 10 years that the Lord would save him. And we were sitting by a pool in my, in my wife's cousin's house. And uh, so we were talking about salvation. And, and we were sitting there. It was close to Christmas. And uh, he made the comment. He said, uh, yeah, he said, I, I did that. And I looked over at him and I said, you did what? He said, you know, I, I bowed my head and I prayed to receive Jesus. I fell over the, the lawn chair into the pool. <laughs> He's looking at me, he goes, what in the name of heaven is wrong with you? I said, I've been praying for you for like 10 years. And that water was cold. And I, I get up out of the pool and my wife's running out there. They go to get her. I says, Danny got saved. And she hugged him. Of course, I'm still in the pool trying to get out. It's cold, you know. And, and they're all wondering why it's such a big thing. And my wife says, do you know we've been praying for you for 10 years? Listen. Keep a journal. Pick a time. Pick a place. Have a strategy. And let God work. And then praise him when he does. I like to give God attaboys on the pat on the back. The closet idea was for secrecy. It doesn't mean that you have to have a closet necessarily as the only place. Choosing a location without interruption may be difficult, but it's the best. Can you think of a place even now where, now let me give you, let me give you a time, early morning or late evening, you guys pick. But do you see these locations? I would pick a place that's comfortable. Preferably someplace if you're morning people where you can see the early morning sun because it's so, uh, to me, encouraging if you can see the sun coming up. If you're late night people, pick a nice lamp that gives off a good, uh, a good uh, where you won't have to worry about when you're reading. Um, and get a good uh, a Bible that reads well and try to pick one of these places. Which one of these do you think is the best for you? How many of you like a nice, comfortable chair by a window? Yeah. How many of you like one of these? What do they call these? A cheese? Where you can pick up your, your feet? Does anybody find anything here that looks comfortable? Okay, this means yes. This means no. Now, you don't have to go out and buy a chair, but my wife and I did. She bought us a, it's a swivel rocker that tilts. Yeah. Okay, now you got an assignment. Before next week in prayer, ask the Lord when and where he wants you to set aside a prayer time. Did you guys ever get an assignment from Pastor Byron? <laughs> pick a time, pick a place. Remember when we first started this, I said, if the Lord were to talk to you and tell you that you need to do something, would you be obedient? And how many of you said yes? Yeah. Pick a time, pick a place. Doesn't have to be something that's etched in steel, but pick a time, pick a place. Set it aside. Block it out in your calendar. Give it a priority. You know, this is, got, this is going to be the time that I'm going to have where I am in prayer. Set it aside. Doesn't necessarily have to be a long time, but make sure that that time has a priority for you. See if the Lord's time and place is different than the one that you choose. Share with the class, come next week, being prepared to tell me what your answer is, where your time and where your place is. How many of you will share tonight, tonight with me that you will be willing to do that? How many of you won't be willing to do it? How many of you are halted between two opinions? Let me tell you the reason why I'm pushing you on this. Because if I don't push you on it, you're not going to do it. You know what I've discovered about Baptists? It takes about this much flame to get them to move. I'm going to close with a story, and this is it. Little boy wanted a bicycle real bad. And, and he, um, he had heard his mom say that, you know, you need to pray about it. And he was trying to find out what type of prayer was the best prayer to pray. And he'd heard about these name it and claim it prayers. And so he says, 
Now, Lord, he says, I'm claiming this bicycle. I'm naming it. And he told the whole Lord about this bicycle. And he says, I'm claiming that bicycle in the name of the Lord. And this is the kind of bike I want. And boy, he just gets down and he just starts going at it. All right. He waited a week and no bicycle came. And he thought, well, boy, that prayer didn't work. So next week, he, he says, now, Lord, if it's in your high, holy, divine, directive wheel, I want you to give me this bicycle. And, and, and he says, now, Lord, I, I don't want to pray against your will, but I'm, you know, I, I've been a good boy. And, and if it's in your will, I want you to give me this bicycle because uh, um, I've been praying and I want you to give it to me. And a week goes by and no bicycle. And he is so disappointed. And he thinks, what am I going to do? So his next door neighbor, who was Catholic, had this little statue up on his car of Mary. So he goes over and he grabs that statue. And he holds that statue and he says, now, Lord, if you ever want to see your mother again, you better give me that bike. <laughs> what one thing did that boy have? A strategy. <laughs> Somebody said determination. Now, you can laugh at me and you can say that wasn't appropriate. But if you walk out of here and you don't pick a time and you don't pick a place, you haven't got a strategy. And if you aim for nothing, you're going to hit it. Do you want to see power in your life, in your prayer life? I want to. So pick a prayer. Strategy. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer as we stand our feet, call upon the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight for this lesson in prayer. And Father, I would not be negligent, Lord, to call upon you to bring to our minds and our hearts a time and a place that you would have us right now, Lord, to pick out for a prayer strategy where we could get together and talk with you intimately, Father, about these prayer requests that we have for the church and the things that's on our own heart. Father, we talked about tonight that as we saw, Lord, that immorality is rampant. And we know, Lord, that the reason why that it is is because prayer is all but dissolved. And so, Father, we come to you tonight and we ask, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would lay upon our heart the burden of prayer. Take us home safe tonight, for it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you.